Welcome to Electro Online. If you were to ask people at random, what do you know about Jupiter? Probably one of the first things that would come out of their mouth was, well, isn't that the planet with a big red spot? And that is indeed the major feature, or one of the major features of the planet Jupiter. Also, the bright bands and zones, of course, would also be considered some of the major features. But to most people, it's that big red spot. And so what is it? Well, it's kind of like a big hurricane, a big storm on the Earth. It's located about 22 degrees south of the equator, and it straddles the equatorial, the south equatorial belt and the south tropical zone. Since the flow of the atmosphere is in opposite directions, north and south of that big red spot, it tends to have that counterclockwise motion. It turns around in about six Earth days, and because of that, we call it an anticyclone. Now, the size is enormous, and notice that it's been observed for at least 300 years, since 1713 has been consistently observed by astronomers. But the first sightings were probably earlier than that. As the story goes, someone named Leander Bantius observed it for the first time in 1635 with his telescope, and he described it as a kind of a, an elongated oval where the length of it was about one-seventh the diameter of the planet, so it does look like he did see it. Gian Domenico Cassini also observed it back in 1665, but then there were large periods where no one had seen it, no one reported it. But consistently since the late 1800s, it's pretty well been observed almost on a daily basis. It's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Now, when did it form? Nobody knows. How long will it last? Nobody knows. But the way it's going, it's been around for three or four hundred years. It probably will last quite a bit longer. Although, recently, since about 1980, the spot has begun to shrunk, and it shrunk about one third of its original size back in the middle of the last century. So now the question is, will it continue to do that and just simply disappear, or will it begin to grow again? We don't know. It could be either one, of course. What is interesting is that we did see the formation of a second red spot, not nearly as big as this one, in the south tropical belt. What happened was we had three smaller storms that looked white in color, and they ended up merging. And after they began to merge, the color began to change, and eventually the color turned into red, just like the big red spot. And perhaps that's maybe a similar way in which this one was formed. Again, we don't know for sure. What's interesting is that as you look at it, you can see that the swirling of the spot is primarily caused by the inflow of air or, well, I call it air, but atmospheric gases coming from the South Equatorial Belt. It swirls around in kind of a thin band and it continues around. Sometimes it kind of disappears here. Sometimes it keeps going and makes more than a complete circle around it so that the outside region of the big red spot is where a lot of the motion is occurring, where the airflow is very, very high. Wind speeds there are in excess of about 400 kilometers per hour or in excess of about 250 miles per hour. So these are huge wind speeds that continuously cause this to turn around. It tends to stay about in the same location relative to the rotation of the planet. The planet rotates in a little bit less than 10 hours and it turns out that the spot also rotates in about that same amount of period. So it stays fairly fixed relative to the whole planet, but of course relative to the belt and the zone, you can see that there's a lot of swirling and we have atmosphere swirling past it very quickly at the top from right to left from east to west and from west to east on the southern part of the uh, big red zone. You can see the south tropical zone flow. And so that seems to be what in part at least keeps the storm going in that rotational motion. Uh, definitely that would make a lot of sense. There were some measurements made by the Juno uh, spacecraft and they believe that the particular red spot goes down into the atmosphere as much as two to 500 kilometers. That would be over 100 to uh, about 300 miles down. And because of that, they think that some of the energy comes from the internal heat of the planet rather than the direct sunlight. So it's probably a combination of the wind speeds around the big red spot from the equatorial belt and the south tropical zone and from the heat that comes from the interior of the planet. Strangely enough, 
when we measure the temperature of the top of this, it appears to be a little bit cooler, not by a lot, but a little bit cooler than the surrounding cloud tops. And so the idea then is that the belief that the top of the storm is a little bit higher, as much as about eight kilometers higher than the surrounding cloud tops. Then when we start taking a look at the very center, we notice that the airflow or the atmospheric flow at the very center tends to be very calm, kind of like the eye of the storm on the Earth's hurricanes. And also we find that the temperature at the very center tends to be about three or four degrees Kelvin warmer than the temperature of the, of the swirling uh, masses of atmosphere around it. So there's some variation in the temperature when we look at that. So definitely it's counterclockwise flow. That's what CCW means, counterclockwise. So we have this very counterclockwise flow and it takes about six days to make one complete, complete rotation. So yes, it has been shrinking. We don't know if it's going to stick around. And uh, let's see, I think I've covered most of what I had on the board. So I have a pretty good idea what it's like. Size-wise, that's one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, so we always wonder, well, how big is this big red spot? And, and definitely if you took the Earth and you placed it right on the spot, so here you can see a, kind of a picture of the planet. And yes, it is huge, you know, Jupiter. Uh, the diameter of Jupiter is about 12 times the diameter of the Earth. So you can see that the Earth would definitely fit right inside the spot with room to spare. Uh, it used to be about twice the length of the diameter of the Earth and one and a half times the width of the diameter of the Earth, but it has been shrinking. So it's pretty well down to about one and a half times the diameter of the Earth in length and about one times the diameter of the Earth in width. So yes, it is not quite as big, but still gigantic. It's bigger than the Earth. It's been around for 102 years. It's just this continual storm that that's, uh, seems to be unabating on the surface of the planet. So that is what the big red spot is all about. Who knows? We may be the last generation or two to see it. In the future it may disappear, but then notice there's other spots that appear. They may grow in size. And so this may just be a continual thing that happens on the planet Jupiter. So it's almost a circle now, so oval? It's still oval in shape, but you're right that uh, it's beginning to shrink into more of a circular shape rather than oval shapes. Yeah, it could become a circular storm if this keeps going. They predict by about the year 2040, it'll be much more circular if the current trend continues. Don't know if it will. <laughs> Is that the same Cassini? Yes, that's where the name Cassini came from. They named the spacecraft Cassini after the scientist. That's right. You're good. So there's not too many Cassinis around. <laughs> not that I know of. <laughs>